Good evening and welcome to Point Break. I'm Vandana Nair, bringing you the latest and most critical updates from the world of AI and tech. At AI Media House, we've been covering AI, tech and analytics for 13 years. And now, we're diving even deeper. Point Break is where AI and tech hit their defining moment. We cut through the noise, break down big trends and uncover disruptions. Fast, fearless and straight to the point. Twice a week, I'll keep you connected to the biggest shifts shaping India and the world. Welcome to the first episode of Point Break. India's foundational model debate sparked quite a buzz a few months ago with leaders, developers and founders rallying behind the idea of building our own deep seek like model. But not everyone agreed. Some argued it might not be the right approach. So where do we stand now and what's next? Let's break it down. Abhishek Singh, Additional Secretary at Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology, shared his thoughts with AIM. But before we dive in, here's a quick roundup of what's been making waves in India. Amitabh Nag, the CEO of the Digital India Bashini Division under MITI, Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology, has recently been entrusted with an additional role as Director of the India Dataset Platform, AI Kosha, and the Application Development Initiative at India AI. This move aligns with the broader goals of Bashini, which aims to bridge language barriers through technology. By overseeing AI Kosha, Nag will play a pivotal role in expanding India's AI capabilities by providing access to critical data sets and fostering innovation in key sectors. AI Kosha is a national data set platform launched by MITI under the India AI mission, serving as a unified repository for non-personal data sets, tools and AI models. It aims to accelerate AI innovation in India by providing access to over 300 data sets and 80 plus models with a focus on developing India-specific AI models, particularly in language translation tools for Indian languages. With data being the crux for any AI model, access to India-specific updated data becomes critical for building indigenous models. The government has in fact invited private firms, including startups, to contribute anonymous, non-personal user data sets to the AI Kosh platform. Tech giants such as Google can also share anonymized usage data without revealing user identities. SaaS or service as a software industry is definitely not dead, as opposed to some of the highly polarized conversation of how SaaS industry will wipe out with AI developments. However, the need to evolve with AI is only going to transform the industry, which is expected to hit $100 billion by 2035. At the recent SAS Bhumi, which is a community for SAS founders, annual 2025 meet in Chennai, Indian SAS giant Freshworks founder and chairman Girish Matrabhutan said that if you're not adopting AI, throw away your roadmap. The SAS Bhumi event couldn't have embraced AI in a bigger way than renaming their community to Bhumi AI. The renaming is only an indication of the integration of SAS and AI to build the industry with a number of SaaS startups choosing to use AI in their businesses. Freshworks recently discussed their roadmap of achieving $1 billion revenue by 2026. In a recent conversation with AIM, Shelton Rigo, Vice President and Managing Director at Freshworks, explained their extensive usage of AI and referred AI to be a very strong tailwind for the company. In his recent visit to India, co-founder and former CEO of Microsoft, Bill Gates, met dignitaries from the Indian government, including Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Union Minister of Information and Broadcasting, Ashwini Vaishnav. Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation is joining forces with the India AI mission to develop AI-driven solutions for critical sectors, including agriculture, healthcare, education, and climate resilience. An MOU will soon be signed. Gates described this meeting as a great discussion with PM Modi, about India's development and the path to Vixit Bharat 2047, an aspiration of becoming a developed nation by 2047. 
So, are building foundation models one of the key routes to get there? Let's find out. India is actively pursuing a robust AI strategy, aiming to launch its first indigenous foundational AI model in 2025. This initiative, spearheaded by Union Minister Ashwini Vaishnav, involves significant investments in AI infrastructure, including 18,000 plus GPUs to democratize AI development and empower startups and researchers. The India AI mission has been bolstered with a substantial budget increase to $240 million or 2,000 crore rupees, reflecting the government's commitment to fostering a competitive AI ecosystem. Last week, ISC Bengaluru hosted its first Nano Electronics Roadshow and conference on the semiconductor ecosystem in India, bringing together key stakeholders from the government, industry, academia and startups to drive innovation in the sector. AIM got in touch with Abhishek Singh, Additional Secretary at MIT, who is also the CEO of the India AI mission. See, ultimately we need to build in our own capability. Now, till we build in our own capability, we will be dependent on them. So the endeavour is to provide all necessary support that is required to build up an Indian foundation model. And once we have state-of-the-art mature models, then only we can kind of say that, yes, we are moving away from the Western models. Because till then, people will be using it. So efforts are into that, making available compute, making available funding, making available data sets, the talent we have. Yeah. And once all the ingredients come together, then maybe we'll be able to have a foundation model. And then we can say that and if whatever is built in India is comparable to the best in the world, mm -hmm. people will be choosing it. Just because it's Indian, that will also not make sense. And then also people still continue to use Western open source okay. if they prove to be better. So we'll have to like focus on quality, we have to focus on cost. And if we are able to do something which is better than a Lama 3 or Lama 4 or uh, Grok or whichever open source models are there, then or Mistral, then only we'll be able to say that yes, we have something and we can move away from dependency. Uh, while we are training a model on Indian datasets, this doesn't mean that we will not, the developers who are working on them or researchers who are working on them, will not make it for the global market. They will be like using datasets that are available, using distillation, using other models which are there, using synthetic datasets so that the models are state of the art. And we see state of the art which will mean that trained on Indian datasets plus plus. So it will be something that will compare to the best in the world. And then only they will be able to stand, uh, stand scrutiny. Because uh, otherwise we have seen how in social media space we had some Indian companies building solutions. But if you don't make it something which can compete with the best, you don't survive. So the same will apply over here also. Ultimately, yeah. you see, GPUs uh, currently uh, are, uh, the GPU is with only a few companies. Now, NVIDIA has got 80 to 90 percent market share. Then is AMD, there are other companies which are coming up. Google is coming up with their TPUs. Meta is working on it. Amazon is working on it. Intel is trying to revive with their new leadership. So, GPUs currently, we, uh, dependency will remain on the West. India is working on GPU design, but for the design to be finalized, and then it to go into actual manufacturing and deployment, we are at least a few years from that. We are expecting the first chip from Micron will be coming out by this year end. Tata Electronics will be producing their first chips by next year. But that is again 28 nanometer. Mm -hmm. But we should also understand that they are the most widely used chips. Mm -hmm. The two to three nanometers are state of the art and very cutting edge technology. Mm -hmm. One aspires to be there, but that's, that's a very small portion of usage at the present. So given the investments that India is making in design link initiative scheme, PLI scheme, ISM 2.0, we will ultimately get there. But it will take some time, it will not happen overnight. As mentioned earlier, AI Koshap, a national dataset platform, is part of this effort, providing access to datasets and AI tools to accelerate innovation. However, challenges persist, including securing adequate R&D funding and overcoming skepticism from venture capitalists. Debates among tech leaders highlight the importance of building foundational AI models from scratch rather than relying on existing ones, with some advocating for a bottom-up approach driven by entrepreneurs and researchers. The government's support for AI development is seen as crucial, 
but experts emphasize the need for sustained investment in research and education to achieve true AI sovereignty. Speaking to AIM earlier this year, Zeroda CTO Kailash Nath told AIM that funding for serious, high-quality AI research is way more important than GPUs. Solid research capability and depth is what will lay the true foundation for AI capabilities, he said. In his blog post, he further shared that India's AI sovereignty and future depends not on a narrow focus on LLMs or GPUs, but on building a foundational ecosystem that encourages breakthroughs through a blend of scientific, social and engineering expertise across academia, industry and civil society. The India AI mission has been receiving a positive response. By 15th Feb, the center received 67 proposals to develop an India-focused AI model, with 20 dedicated to large language models. A high-level technical committee, including external experts, will assess these submissions and make a decision within a month. Among the key contenders are Servam AI, Korover AI and Ola, all vying to build a foundational AI model for India. The calls for proposals for building foundation models on 30th of Jan and by 15th Feb we have got 67 applications and the way the call for proposals is working is that every month till 15th we get applications. So while we are evaluating the first 67, we are very dear to finalizing the proposals which will be funded under the model. But in the meantime, by 15th March, we have got 120 more proposals. This also shows the kind of uh, uh, capacity, the kind of ability that we have in our startup and research ecosystem. So, so given that we have almost 200 proposals of building foundation models and the kind of capability which is there and the funding ability that is there with the government of India, I'm sure this will very soon we'll have an Indian foundation model. So while uh, investments in the chip design and building semiconductors is ongoing at the same time, our researchers and starters will are already working on an Indian foundation model and hopefully we'll see it very soon. With foundation models being one of the seven key pillars of the India AI mission, training AI on India's own data, languages and context becomes critical. As open source models may not remain open forever, the need of the R is an Indian AI model. While compute limitations have been a challenge, the India AI mission is actively working to address this bottleneck. That's all for the first episode of Point Break. I'll be back on Friday with more global insights. Take care and have a great night. And please don't forget, think AI, think AIM.